just so everybody knows, uh, city space is one of the most important things that's happened in this city in a long time. Um, I actually, Alex was down at the college the other, the other day, we were talking about this. If, you, if you've worked in studios before and built them and run them like I have, you know that studios are high turnover, low profit margin businesses. They, they have to have constant throughput and feature films will never do that. Only tell the long run TV series will do that. And so uh, now Alex and CineSpace are having producers based there at the studio developing developing projects and, and, if the, and if more projects can get developed and be based in Chicago that will have that will make it possible to bring feature films in here. Independent feature films, smaller films will be able to shoot here more more than they otherwise could. But you, you have you have to see this as an integrated market. It's not just the movies we want to go and see. It's the T V shows and whatever else follows on from that. It's really important. And we actually had six T V shows here at one point. You know, uh, Mind Games didn't do too well and Betrayal Made it through that first season, wasn't renewed. Um, well, yeah, Playboy Club was a disaster. That was a few years ago. But uh, oh, it's got to be good. Know, it's got to be good. Or at least, but, or at, least at, at least have Taylor Kinney in it or something like that. I mean, uh, but yeah, now Chicago Fire, Chicago PD. We're hoping that Empire, that pilot uh, with Terrence Howard, will get picked up and go to series, and that it'll shoot here. Um, so. The development is there, and I remember when, I mean, we, there were several years where we were hearing about Cinespace coming here, this studio from Canada, and I remember me and Betsy Steinberg were just like, well, why are they, what, why are they coming over here? What's, what, we, and at that time, there was no TV here. The reason is because the nephews lived in Chicago. Yeah, right. But they came here, and they, they built the studio, and, and now they're bringing the shows here, and they've been supportive. What will, what will it take to get more independent features in that money, <laughs> just money. I mean, where is? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Where is? Where is the film funding in Chicago? I don't know. I don't get funded out of Chicago. <laughs> there are these magical microphones. I will say though, back in the you know back in the so-called golden age of Hollywood, I'm trying to. Was it Solomon Brothers? There was an investment, uh, you know, an investment firm that was out of Chicago that that provided a lot of money. I mean, if you're making movies like they make it today, not so much. The studios today don't, you know, they they don't almost never 100 percent finance a movie. The production companies bring the finance with them. The studios are primarily clearing houses and distribution entities today. Uh, they do provide some of the financing. Rarely do they provide it all. It's coming from. Hither and yon, and any place you. I just made a movie. Uh, it was com uh, my almost my entire budget was provided by one gentleman who made a fortune in the vitamin business. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, he's, he's, he's <laughs> Kevin Trudeau, was no. And, and I will say this. I will say this about him. I've met an amazing variety of scoundrels, thieves, pickpockets. Uh, the worst people you could imagine in the motion picture industry. This gentleman who came from the vitamin business was a man of his word, said he would put up the money, the check was in the bank by the end of the week, we Never, and, and I've become great friends, he's a wonderful man. The money can come from anywhere, Any, every, God, uh, I will say thank you God that, that people come with the money because they think the all sorts, they have all sorts of ideas about it. It's not a great business to come into and, really, and invest money into. They're much better. But there is perceived to be a certain amount of glamour and whatever in, fun uh, yeah, and fun to be in. So, you know, if you, when you find these people, embrace them. But often they're crooks and scoundrels and backstabbing pickpockets and thieves. Uh, <laughs> so I was very fortunate this time. But I've met all those other ones, believe me. So I want to talk about the money. The money could come from anywhere. So how did you, hang on to the mic. So let's just talk about, I'm going to get a little specific. And then if you have a question in your mind, uh, I'm going to ask you for it in a sec. So John. You meet this vitamin guy. What? How did you? I hate to use the word sell, but you know, how did you bring this guy? How did you get him to believe in your project? I just can't speak well enough of this man. Okay, his name is Jerry Kessel. He really is a, a, a wonderful human being. Did you show up on your doorstep? Oh, my, like, my manager. Pick a number. My manager at the time who right. tried to pick Jerry's pocket and sort of did. Uh, you know, and had never met Jerry, but knew of him. So you have to meet this guy. He puts money in the movies. I said, okay, okay. And for a series of, you know, in, in Los Angeles, if, if anyone sets a meeting, he said, okay, we're going to have lunch on Tuesday at two o'clock. 
they will always go, oh, I have to change it to Thursday because I'm the most important person in the world and I can't possibly make this meeting. And it drives me insane. I grew up where I grew up, I grew up in Chicago, so I'm going to be there at this time, I'm there at that time. So I got I got jerked off three times on meetings with Jerry. And by the third time, my manager called me and said, well, he's, a, he's back in town and he really blah, blah, blah. I said, tell him to go fuck himself. I've had enough of these <laughs> And I've told a lot of people in Hollywood to go fuck themselves over the years, and it hasn't always been the wisest business uh, plan. So I thought, you know, okay, let's try a different tack here, and we'll go have the meeting. I met him within like 30 seconds. I go, this is a completely decent and honest man. He said, okay, I'm going to put money in the account for this project. By the time I got out, he, I met him in Malibu. I was staying in Venice. By the time I drove back, my manager called. The money was in the bank. So, but that's a completely, I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, incredibly unusual. So, but money comes from everywhere in this business, all over the world. People want to put money in the movie business. You just have to find them and know that they're going to try and pick your pocket, stab you in the back, steal your wallet, any, you know, it's, and be ready for it. But if you can get the money, take it and run and make your movie. So, for, very good, and so, and uh, either Bruce or Gary here, you know, when I, and this might be you as well here, Bruce, because you've made a lot of movies from the one you made with Steve James to the one I think you're developing that you're going to shoot back in New Zealand, possibly here, where where do you think those sources of money might be in Chicago? Because with me, running the Midwest Independent Film Festival, we also serve as a resource for filmmakers, and uh, if a film's coming to town, like there was one that was just here that shot up in Evanston, we introduce them to producers, camera gear, post houses, all that. But many times I people say, well, we're, we're, I actually just met with a pretty prominent producer in Chicago. It's like, well, where, where are these film financiers in Chicago? Granted, there isn't necessarily a, someone with a shingle that says film financiers, but there are places with money. Where, where do you think we can find those untapped resources of, of film financing in Chicago? Because I think we found that that would help build a community. Well, that's a long conversation. But I'll just tell you a couple of things. Um, you know, I, I was the development producer in the studio, the biggest studio in New Zealand for a while. We did films like Whale Rider and stuff. And um, so I know a little bit about development. And I know that the, in development, you have to be very um, pessimistic about the, about the probability of a script to actually work. It's just the only way to run that business. But um, when we were, in, I don't know if you were involved in this, but in the early days of putting the tax incentive together, the governor of the day, who's now in jail, but lots of our governors are in jail, so that's okay. The, the, the governor of the day formed a visual media task force, and I was on it, while title, various, various of us were on it. And in that task force, I came up, I put, put a pro proposal on the table for a development fund in Chicago, really based on hybridizing the, the more of the um, European model and the American model. Everybody loved it, it was great. 50 million bucks we were going to bring into Chicago to, as a development fund. And then what happened was, the different factions in the room started carving it up. Started saying, I won't name the factions, but you can figure out who they are. Started saying, well, if we can fund six films, we'll, have, we'll decide on two of them, and you decide on two of them, whatever. And I, and I just said, look, I work in development. I ain't doing it that way. It's not going to happen. And so I think that this is a real issue in Chicago, is, yeah. is that, is that um, there has to be a sense of collaborative... Um, success. There has to be a sense of somebody else getting something and succeeding and that's good for us. Right now it's a little too selfish. And to put the to put the resources together in Chicago, you can get them from other places. And then just on the note of money comes from anywhere, years ago in New Zealand when I was making films there, the richest guy, the richest business guy in the country took a meeting with some of us from the industry. And we sat down with him, his name was Michael Fay, and uh, he, he paid for the New Zealand America's Cup. Right? You know, the, the, uh, the yachting thing. So he's a rich guy. All right. So we sat down with him and, and he said, so you want me to put money into the movie business? And we said, yeah, and obviously. And he said, well, you realize that I can make way more money by speculating on currency overnight than I can ever, ever, ever make in, in, by, by investing in a movie. So the first thing you must not do is tell me this is the best business deal I'm going to get because the conversation's over. But he says, if, if I can get some money that means something to me out of it at the other end and believe in that, and I can have a good time and feel like I did something special that my grandchildren will talk about forever, I'll be in. Well, most filmmakers don't understand that when they're pitching their films. 
Most filmmakers don't understand that the pitch is about what the other person wants. Not about what you've got or what you want, it's about what the other person wants. And this doesn't happen in Chicago, but it happens in LA all the time. And we have to get, we have to grow up in Chicago about what we're really doing when we ask people for money. Because too often what we're saying is, I'm fabulous, my thing is fabulous, shut the fuck up, leave me alone, give me all your money. And it doesn't work. It's never worked and it won't work. Okay, so it's yeah. more about finding, as opposed to, so, because I've always, you know, people have sometimes said, well, what sold them on it was the script. It's more about what they want to get out of it is what you're feeling. I mean, the script certainly helps. The trick is, the trick is, how do you convince somebody else that by, no yeah, it doesn't make any difference. You the script have, makes I, no I'm difference. pitching you, I'm pitching you, I have to convince you that by you giving me what I want, you'll get what you want. Yeah. It's just... It's like a fucking whorehouse with no red lights. That's what it is. And you just have to, it's like a, you got something, I got something. How do we both get something out of putting those two things together? That's the story. Yeah. Uh, people with money have had it. People with money have had it. Yeah. People with money have passion. People with money have passion. And that's what they want to put their money into. So that's just, I'm just... Absolutely. About finding that passion in a potential investor. Does anyone else have some questions here? Just, just yeah. remember that for every one passionate person with a great script, there's another 200. Right? That's the hard part for the funding guys. Which one are they going to put the money to? 